Without further ado, I am again happy to get things started with this product introduction to the Insight system from Osteosis, a preclinical system for body composition and bone mineral density measurements. During today's webinar, I'd like to focus on three different areas. The first being what is DEXA and how does it work? Then I'll move on to talking more specifically about the Insight, Insight system um, and an overview of the capabilities. And finally, I'll finish up with key research applications. So what is DEXA and how does it work? I'll start by outlining what dual energy X-ray absorptiometry is and how it works. We'll review some of the acquired images, the available measurements, and then I'll make a brief comparison to other techniques in this area. So what is DEXA? DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry, and it is used to assess body composition. It uses the principles that different tissues in the body have varying mass attenuation coefficients or varying amounts that they uh, attenuate, the X-ray signal being introduced into the body. In this case, DEXA uses two different X-ray sources. having various energies, one low and one high energy. The different energies pass through the body, hitting the different tissues of interest, and then ultimately hitting the detector. From the images that are acquired, an equation can be used which determines which type of tissue each pixel is made up of. The options here are actually a three compartment system, the first being bone, the second being soft tissue, and that is either fat or lean mass. These are some of the example images. These images specifically were acquired on the um, Insight system from Osteosis, but are indicative of what you could expect from DEXA systems uh, within the marketplace. Here what you'll see though on the X-ray attenuated image is that the, the resolution of the images on the Insight system are very high and we'll review um, the resolution capabilities of the system as we get into the technical specifications specifically. Here you can see both the bone structure as well as some of the internal organs. The system then uses those equations to solve for where the bone is located within the image based on the attenuation of those dual energy x-rays. This is called a bone mineral density image. And then finally it takes the soft tissue and it differentiates it into both fat and lean mass. So fat you're seeing here in orange and the lean mass you're seeing in green. From those images there's a number of different measurements which are available and are very standard for DEXA type imaging to look at body composition. So first off we have bone mineral density, bone area, and bone mineral contents. Those are all used for um, things like in the clinic looking at the development and progression of osteoporosis. If you wanted to look further at body composition in terms of looking at the difference between fat and lean mass, there's measurements which are made for that, as well as total mass and tissue area that can be calculated. While comparison, comparing to other techniques, we can start to look at the available measurements. So again, with DEXA, we're able to look at both fat and lean mass as well, well as the bone mineral content. We can take a look at scan times coming in at around 25 seconds and some of the advantages of the DEXA imaging versus um, NMR, which is the other technique that we'll talk about, um, is that you can measure both bone, lean and fat mass, uh, as well as getting some weight measurements. Uh, images are actually acquired so you can visualize the animal, uh, its bone structures, the internal organs, and there's a high degree of accuracy and precision and we'll show you some examples of that later on. Uh, a considered disadvantage of using a DEXA system compared to an NMR system is that it does require anesthesia to keep the animal stable uh, throughout the entire image acquisition. As I mentioned, comparing this to NMR or echo MRI, in NMR, we're only looking at fat and lean mass as well as water content. There's no information provided about the bone mineral content. Scan times tend to be a little bit longer, uh, comparable when we're not looking at the water content, uh, which is possible with echo MRI. Um, no anesthesia is required for echo NMR. Um, however, 
There's no information, as I mentioned before, about the bone mineral content or the weight of each of the specific um, body composition measurements, like lean and fat mass, as well as the bone mass. Um, and again, no images are provided using echo MRI. Moving now onto the Insight system itself, I'll focus first on the system components, features and benefits of the system, reviewing some of the technical specifications, as well as taking a look at the analysis software. This is the specific the system that we see here. Uh, it is a benchtop cabinet-based system. It is self-shielded. It has integrated anesthesia, and it requires only a standard electrical connection, making it very simple to site within an existing lab or behind the barrier within an animal facility. The system is connected to a workstation operating with Windows 10. And the offline analysis software is possible to be installed on other computers to allow you to do uh, analysis either remotely during the times of COVID that's become very important, or at least not occupying the system for image acquisition and doing the analysis afterwards. Some of the features and benefits of the system. So it does allow you to do longitudinal studies, and this is for several reasons, but most importantly that the data is acquired in a non-invasive manner, allowing you to study body composition over time. The data is very easy to acquire. There's no preparation steps required other than simply anesthetizing the animal for the image acquisition. The amount of radiation given using that this is an x-ray based um, analysis technique is minimized at all points. And, and that ensures that the radiation given to acquire the images doesn't have an impact on the animal and affecting your studies over the course of those longitudinal um, time points. Scan times are very fast, coming in at around 25 seconds per scan. This allows for very high throughput studies to be completed using the system. And like we saw in the example images, the very high resolution, approximately 100 micron resolution um, when studying animals such as mice and rats. The wide scan area coming in at 16.5 by 25.5 centimeters allows for a variety of animal models to be imaged. And when looking at body composition, often we're studying obesity and different metabolic disorders. And so it is important that larger species and animals can be measured. Um, and it um, has been shown to be capable of measuring animals up to 500 grams. Taking a little bit deeper dive into the specifics, um, the technical specifications of the system, the system does use cone beam um, x-ray source, and that allows us to do uh, a single acquisition and a using a flat panel detector, and that brings the acquisition time down to about 25 seconds. As I mentioned earlier, up to 500 gram animals can be imaged using the system. Traditionally, imaging is done using either mice or rats. The imaging area we talked about previously, again, allowing for those larger species and animals to be imaged. The pixel size um, at the standard magnification coming in at about 100 microns. Um, the plate that you see here can be moved up or down to adjust for the magnification, again, affecting uh, the pixel size as well. The dimensions of the system are quite small, allowing it to fit nicely within an existing busy laboratory space. And again, those power requirements and operating temperatures, uh, again, fit nicely with the system being operational in an existing lab facility or animal facility. Moving on to the analysis software. So what you're seeing here is what you would be presented with once the images are acquired. Uh, the images can be magnified, as you see in these examples, to allow you to be more specific about drawing your regions of interest and allowing you to make specific length measurements, for example, on the femur. Again, all the available measurements are outlined here in the table to the right-hand side. Taking a deeper look at the analysis software, you can do a whole body region of interest or drawing up to seven different regions of interest, getting the specific um, available measurements from each of the regions of interest. The blue exclusion region of interest that you see here can be placed on the image to remove any or all parts of that uh, region of interest from the calculations being provided as necessary. And again, as I mentioned, length measurements can be completed on any bone. And again, the magnification may be helpful here uh, if the bones are quite small. When doing longitudinal studies, it may be of interest to plot the results from the same animal over the course of the longitudinal study, looking at the different time points. 
Uh, the software can be used to display both the trend lines as well as a graphical representation of the data uh, which is available. From here, all of the data can be exported in a CSV format for compilation in programs like Excel or other programs to allow you to do um, statistical analysis of the results that you've acquired. As well, any of the images can be exported in very standard image formats. Moving now to some of the key research applications. First, I'll take a look at some example images. We'll focus on some of the research areas of interest. And then we'll take a look at some of the key studies. Here we have some example images coming from a, from a mouse. As we mentioned earlier, we get this x-ray attenuated image so we can start to look at the animal's posture, the bone structure, and some degree of detail on the internal organs. The system then uses those equations to solve for the bone mineral density image, and this is where each pixel uh, within the image is actually assigned to either the bone map or the soft tissue map. Further, the soft tissue map is broken out into either fat or lean mass. Again, here we can see fat in orange and lean mass in green. These images are taken on rats, so again, a larger animal um, getting up to about 500 grams can be imaged using the system. Uh, so again, we can hear the, see the exquisite detail with 100 micron resolution of uh, the bone and internal organ structure in the x-ray attenuated image. Taking a look again at the bone mineral density image and moving on to the color image showing us the fat and the lean mass. Not only can small animals such as mice and rats be imaged, but using the digital radiography um, mode on the system, we can image many other species such as fish, um, amphibians, and even electrical components as well, if desirable um, by the group um, using the system. Taking a look at the different research areas that are of interest for those using DEXA. DEXA does, as we've mentioned, result in bone mineral density and body composition data, um, which can be useful to a wide variety of application areas. The system can be used to perform longitudinal studies to look at the progression or the regression of disease in response to a therapeutic um, compound or regime. Specifically looking at bone mineral density measurements, these may be important in metabolic bone diseases such as osteoporosis. Um, and actually the World Health Organization considers DEXA the gold standard in the clinic for assessing and diagnosing osteoporosis and then monitoring the progression of that disease. Also important is looking at arthritis, as changes in bone mineral density, um, when detected on a traditional image such as an x-ray, are often not, uh, not treatable. You want to make, make the detection and the diagnosis much earlier um, in the disease progression so that it can be stopped prior to any degradation in the bone mineral density. You can also use the bone mineral density information to look at musculoskeletal diseases um, and taking a look at drug safety and toxicology as well. The other body composition measurements of lean and fat mass may become important looking, when looking at metabolic disorders such as diabetes, obesity, and other things which affect um, body composition, including changes in diet, um, hormone regulation, things like that. Um, musculoskeletal diseases also have an interest in looking at lean and fat mass, as well as drug safety and toxicology. Moving on to a few of the more recent publications. This poster was presented at the 2019 KLAS International Symposium. Here the group was looking at body composition um, in both mice and rats over time. In the top, we can see the x-ray attenuated image, and this was used to visualize, again, the skeletal structure, the posture of the animal, as well as some of the internal organs. The bone segmentation images that you see on the bottom left were used to, again, look at the posture um, and confirm uh, the results which were provided. The color compensation images that you see on the right-hand side allowed the researchers to track the lean and fat mass changes over time. And we can see that when fed a high, fed a high fat diet over time, all of the animals increased um, in fat mass while lean mass stayed quite consistent. This study was recently published in Laboratory Animal Research in 2019. 
and here this group was looking at obesity in rats. This system used the in this paper, sorry, used the insight system um, to study body composition changes over time. These mice were sorry, these rats were fed a high fat diet over the course of the eight week study. This study also aimed to look at the accuracy of the DEXA weight results and assessed uh, the accuracy by comparison to an electronic scale. They also wanted to take a look at the precision of the measurements by looking at the coefficient of variation by making repeated measurements at the eight week time point. Here in this figure, we can see um, changes in total body weight, total body fat weight, and total body lean weight over time. The high fat diet is in the orange line with the normal diet um, in the blue dotted line. The bars that you see below are actually the difference um, between those uh, two values, again, the high fat diet and the normal diet as shown over time. And so what we can see here is that um, over time, of course, the mass, the total mass is increasing uh, in both animals as the animals are aging over the course of the study. However, if we start to look at the total body fat weight, we can see a significant difference between the two diets. Um, that is the high fat diet having a larger um, fat mass compared to um, the animals fed the normal diet, while the lean mass stays almost the, exactly the same over the course of the entire study. These researchers then went on to look at the precision of the DEXA measurements. Um, and they did this using, uh, by assessing the coefficient of variation by making repeated measurements on the same animals at the eight week time point. And they found that these measurements were very precise, as can be seen in the table above. The accuracy of the measurements was also assessed um, by comparing the DEXA weight results to those of an electronic scale. And again, as shown in the figure below, we can see that there's a very strong correlation between uh, the actual measurements on a scale as compared to those made by the DEXA system. Another study, this one more recently published in the Journal of Bone Metabolism, did a comparison between DEXA and NMR, again, specifically looking at the insight system. They wanted to compare the body composition analysis results between the insight system and echo MRI or NMR and ver verifying the precision and the accuracy of both systems. The results were compared between the modalities as well as to autopsy results. And the authors found that there was a higher level of precision and accuracy in the DEXA measurements made with the insight system compared to those of NMR or echo MRI, along with additional uh, the addition of the bone mineral density information available uh, from the insight system. Here in the table on the left, we can start to look at the precision of the data. Precision was assessed for all available measurements on each modality and was again found to be higher using the insight system than with echo, and, um, echo MRI. The bone mineral content, body weight, and femur length measurements were only available using the insight system and were not available using the NMR. The RE results uh, refer to the euthanized animals, well, where the RA results refer to the anesthetized animals. Um, the anesthetized animals and the euthanized animals were repositioned between each measurement. Um, and what they found was that the accuracy of the results between systems was compared um, by measuring the fat mass. And they found that there was no difference seen between the euthanized and anesthetized animals using the DEXA system. However, there was a difference noted um, between euthanized and anesthetized animals using the NMR. Um, so again, showing the, the accuracy of the DEXA system results. Body weight and bone, bone mineral content were only available using the insight system and showed very strong correlation with the reference measurements um, made at autopsy using, using an electronic scale. So I hope that you've enjoyed the webinar um, introducing you to the insight system from osteosis. We started off by reviewing what DEXA is and how it works, the technical specifications of the insight system and a little review of the system capabilities. And then we finished up by focusing on some of the key research applications. As we finish up the formal part of the webinar today, I would like to take this last chance to launch uh, the final audience poll. Here I'm interested to learn a little bit more about your desire to learn more about the Insight system. 
Would you like us to reach out to discuss options to see the system in action? Or would you like us to send you some specific research applications or to discuss your research applications in more detail? Or would you like us to send you the recording of the webinar as you think it may be relevant to some of your colleagues? I'll give everyone a few more seconds just to finish um, answering the poll question. Great, thank you for taking the time to answer the last poll question. I look forward to following up with each of you to learn more about the work that you were doing and if the Insight System could be a benefit to your studies. Moving now to some questions that have come in throughout the webinar. If you haven't had a chance to pose your question, please use the Q&A dialog box below and we will address as many questions as possible in the remaining time that we have. The first question that's come in is when working with images, can the user choose to display only the lean or the fat mass image? And the answer is yes. Um, in a new update to the software, there is an option for the user to overlay uh, the bone mineral image with the color image showing both the lean and the fat mass. However, if you would like, the user has the ability to change um, the display to show only the lean or fat mass with or without the bone mineral image. Taking a look at some of the other questions that have come in, um, in addition to the standard body composition measurements that appear to be possible with the system, can a linear measurement be, ma be made for a specific bone, for example, the femur? Yes, as I showed in some of the earlier slides, the analysis software allows you to make a linear measurement on the x-ray attenuated image. You can even blow this image up uh, to get more detail to be more precise about the image that you're, or the measurement that you're making. Um, so given the quality and the re resolution of the image, it's definitely possible to make an accurate and reproducible measurement of the bone length, specifically, for example, the femur, as was mentioned in the question. Just taking a look at some other questions. Is it possible to use the system to take a regular digital x-ray image? Yes, as you saw in one of the slides, there were some images of a fish and some electronics, and this is called the digital radiography mode. In this mode, the user can adjust both the voltage, current, as well as the time for a single energy exposure. Another question, is there offline analysis software available and in what format is the data available? As I mentioned earlier, yes, there is an offline analysis software. This will allow the images to be analyzed um, remotely and this will leave the, the system available for image acquisition rather than being occupied to do the data analysis. Once the data is analyzed, it can be exported in a CSV or text format to be compiled in Excel or some other program to take a look at your statistics. And while the images may be then also exported in standard formats for any of your presentations. Another great question here, are there any preparation steps needed to perform DEXA imaging? And the simple answer is no. There is no need to administer any compounds or contrast agents to generate the data that you've seen here, nor is there any need to remove any of the hair or any other procedure to prepare the animals. The only thing that must be administered is some form of anesthesia, whether that's an inhaled anesthesia or an injectable anesthesia, it's important to make sure that the animal is still for the 25 second acquisition. Um, to note here is that we don't need to get to a surgical plane of anesthesia. We simply need to have the animal immobilized uh, so that they're not moving throughout the 25 second acquisition. The system can be configured to work with or to be provided with an anesthesia system, traditionally using isofluorine, or it can work with your own anesthesia system if you have one, um, or again, using an injectable anesthesia is also possible with the system. This is a great question here. The applications of this type of imaging for bone disease and metabolic disorders uh, resulting in changes to body co composition is clear. However, you mentioned applications in drug safety and toxicology. Can you expand on where this type of imaging could be relevant to this area of study? Uh, of course, this is again, as I mentioned, is a great question. Um, when identifying a potential therapeutic compound, it's really important to understand compounds that are gonna be effective at treating the disease of interest. However, it's also very important that we understand the effect those compounds could have on body composition. For example, is there a decline in the bone mineral density or in the lean mass in someone being treated with a therapy? Um, these effects need to be fully understood and taken into account when weighing the negative 
effects that this could have with the compound's effectiveness against um, as a potential therapy and, and really just weighing the pros and cons of both. But again, it's important to understand um, the effects that the compound would have on the body. Um, another great question here that I didn't really touch too much on. Can you tell us more about the manufacture of the system? Um, definitely. The Insight system is manufactured um, by a company based in Korea called Osteosis. Osteosis was established in 2000 and has been a main player in the clinical market of body composition analysis systems, including both quantitative ultrasound systems as well as peripheral and central um, body DEXA systems. They have over 17,000 systems installed worldwide in approximately 98 countries. When Osteosis set out to design a preclinical DEXA system, they wanted to take into account the vast research and development experience that they had with their clinical systems, but also taking into account the gap in the preclinical market. As many of you may know, the predecessor um, from GE, the Luna Piximus, is no longer available. And so what Osteosis wanted to do was take into account that the Piximus system, how well it worked, but then also address some of the shortcomings that the system had. So in this, they set out to design a self-shielded system, which would be easier to operate. Additionally, they wanted to implement the cone beam X-ray and flat panel detectors to allow the scan times to be shortened uh, to reduce the overall exposure of the animals um, to radiation um, and improve the resolution as well as the image quality. Here at Syntica Instrumentation, as many of you know, we work to bring well-engineered products to researchers from around the world. Um, late last year, we started to look more closely at the Insight system, and after a bit of market research, we were able to find the gap in the DEXA market, and we recognized the quality of the Osteosis product, and we were excited to bring the system to the North American market. Um, again, as we come to the end of the 30 minutes that we have together, I do invite you to reach out and have a further conversation about any of the work that you're doing and how this DEXA system may be able to help you with that research. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, we will be sure to answer any of the additional questions that came in throughout the webinar. We'll provide a transcript of the questions that I did answer as well as those that have come through, and we hope to get this out to you in the next couple of days. I'd like to thank all of you for joining me today for this short 30 minute webinar to learn more about the Insight DEXA system and for your active participation in the Q&A session. I trust that we've been able to provide you with a bit more insight into the wide utility of the system and that you found the information relevant to the work that you were doing in your own labs. If in the days and weeks to come, you have further questions about the Insight system discussed today, I do encourage you to reach out to us here at Syntica Instrumentation and we will be happy to discuss further. I would welcome the opportunity to discuss your specific research goals and how the DEXA or any of our other imaging systems uh, may help you to reach them. Thanks again for, to all of you for taking the time out of your day to attend our session, and we look forward to seeing you at a future Syntica Instrumentation event. Have a great day.